Are you looking for some high-end spring decor on a budget? Well, you've come to the right place. Today I am sharing 10 different Kirkland's dupes that you should absolutely DIY instead of buy. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. So if you love that too, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future video. Also a huge thank you to Karma for sponsoring today's video. They are an all-in-one online shopping assistant that helps me save time and money. I'm excited to share more about them in a little bit, but first let's hop into the DIYs. Up first, let's tackle this Easter Bunny throw pillow. You're gonna need some felt for the front and something to trace. I used this Dollar Tree wood cutout that I had, but you could also print out something if you don't have this. I just thought this was a perfect dupe because it was the exact same size and position. Once I got it cut out, I put it on top of some ticking stripe fabric that I had left over from my glider thrift makeover. And this was nice because you don't need any more than a half a yard. So this is a cheap project. Once I had my size figured out and my squares cut, I lined up both pieces of fabric making sure that my stripes were going the same way and then I glued around the outside to create a pillow. You're gonna want to do three sides fully and then your fourth side you're gonna do about halfway leaving a gap in the middle like I'm doing here so then that way you can flip it inside out and stuff it. Once your glue cools, stick your hand inside, flip it inside out and also make sure to use your fingers to push out the corners that way you won't have a frumpy pillow. Then lay down your bunny and start on one side and work your way around to hot glue your bunny on to your unstuffed pillow. This will just help to get it exactly where you want it. And then once your bunny is all stuck down, you're going to take some stuffing and fill that bad boy up. Now I like to use stuffing from old seasonal pillows because then that way I can just store the outside and re-glue each season. It helps with storage on my end. Then the last step is to take some more hot glue, get your seam to line up and glue it so that it is shut. I like to use Gorilla Glue glue sticks so it stays and this thing is so cute. I love the neutral vibes but it also is very Eastery. And the best news is $30 versus under 10. This is a third of the price to DIY. I'm loving incorporating golds and metals into my decor, but this six pack of resin eggs for 50 bucks was not gonna fly. So I grabbed this set of 12 craft eggs for five bucks, but 40% off at Hobby Lobby, and I decided to make them over with some rub and buff. So many of you have asked me if I've used this product before, and I had not until this project, and it turned out so great. So all you do is paint it on with a brush, just like you would any paint, but it's really gonna give you that nice metal look. Once it has dried a little bit, take your finger and rub out any of the imperfections. That's gonna really give it that metal look and a smooth finish to make them look more high-end than plastic eggs. These turned out so great and I also love how light they are. If they fall off a table or something with my two-year-old, it's no big deal. It's not gonna hurt him and it's also not gonna hurt the egg. These look so cute with my Target Dollar Spot bunnies and I think I might need to make some more. As a reminder, theirs were 50 bucks for a pack of six and mine with the entire container of rub and buff, which you only use like a teeny bit of, is eight bucks. So you've got some supplies left over for a future project. One of the most popular questions lately are, Whitney, when are you gonna do Easter printables? Well, here I am. I found two inspiration pieces that I love, designed some files for you guys, and I printed them out on my Epson photo printer as well as my HP printer. This one is on photo paper, and then I also printed out this He Is Risen one on my regular printer with cardstock. It turned out just fine, so you could definitely do that on your own printer. I suggest cardstock, it just looks a little bit better. But then you could also just send them to Walgreens, do an eight by 10, or whatever size frame if you don't have a printer at home it's very affordable and the Walgreens by me is always running some sort of deal as a reminder their big canvas prints were about 35 and 45 dollars I ended up doing mine for five dollars each and that was just the cost of the frame which I already had so it was free to me and I can switch them out for each season throughout the year DIYing high-end dupes isn't the only way that you can save when decorating your home. I buy a ton of decor and craft supplies online and I am always Googling Kirkland's coupon codes, Michael's coupon codes, insert the store here coupon codes, because I'm afraid that I'm gonna miss a deal. I cannot be the only one, right? Well, if you're like me, you will love Karma. Karma is both a free app and a Chrome browser extension that is basically a shopping assistant. It's an all-in-one solution that's gonna help you save time and money when you're shopping online, and who doesn't love that? When ordering prints for this next project from Walgreens, Karma's Chrome extension quickly found me a 50% off coupon and applied it. No hunting required, it saved me a ton of time, and you can also search their website to find different coupons too. 
With Karma, I can create product wish lists for upcoming projects and room refreshes. And adding items from my phone for the next season's list, like these lemons, are super easy with the Karma app. Then I can take those one step further and set up notifications for real-time price updates on items I'm loving. So that can be any price changes or 25% off or 50% off. So you're only getting notified for what will resonate with you. I can even earn cash back on Karma when I purchase from their select retail partners. And it's easy to find out who those are. You can go to your dashboard, select Karma Cash, and you can search to see if your retailer is eligible. And the best part out of all of this is that the app for my phone loving friends and the Chrome extension, if you like to shop on desktop, are free to download and use. You can head down to the description, click the link, create an account and start saving today. Now let me show you Karma in action on this next project and how it saved me 50% off a print to make this gorgeous bunny sign. I love watercolor elements, you guys know that. And so I fell in love with this Easter bunny trio framed art, but not for 140 bucks. So their size was a 16 by 16 and I don't have a space that works well for that. So I grabbed one of these unfinished 12 by 12 squares. You can get these at Walmart. These came from Amazon. I will link them down below and I stained it in briar smoke stain. Now here's where the magic happened. I designed this bunny file to mimic the look of the Kirkland's one and I went to Walgreens to order it. Well, I had already downloaded the Karma extension and it asked me if I wanted to apply some codes. So it went through, tested everything it knew about Walgreens current promotions and voila, $9.50 off. So instead of a $19 poster that I was gonna order, it was under 10 bucks. Gotta love that. So once I printed it out, because it was 12 by 12, I had to do it a little bit bigger than my actual piece. So I had to cut it down so it would fit inside my sign. You could do this with any printable. You could also print out photos of your family and make some really pretty wall tiles. Once it was set, I took some double-sided tape to get it to stick down. I like that instead of Mod Podge, then that way you don't have to worry about any bubbling. I just made sure to get the corners covered as well as the center, push it down, and you've got a really, really beautiful piece of art. Again, totally customizable, any season. So mine is a little bit smaller than the Kirkland's Inspiration. However, it fits my decor perfectly. So I was able to dupe their $140 sign, again, in a little bit smaller of a size, but for 15 bucks, can't beat that. And thanks to Karma for the coupon code. Lavender has become a huge staple in my spring decor, so this piece caught my eye, but again, not for 80 bucks. So we're gonna go back to that pack of eggs. I only used six for the metallic ones, so we're gonna use the other six for this arrangement. So the first thing I did was I just took a screwdriver and popped a hole in the bottom. You could use a drill, but that's just what I had near me. And then I had these little skewers from Amazon left over from Finn's birthday, and I just inserted them into the bottom. You could use dowel rods, toothpicks, whatever you have. Then to give the speckled effect that you saw in the inspiration, I stuck them into a piece of floral foam so they wouldn't roll on me. And then I took a bristle brush with some black paint and just flinged it on to the eggs. Yes, flinged is an official craft term. Once everything was coated, I let them dry and I grabbed this box from Michael's. Now I could have easily built this myself, but it's cold in Illinois and I got this on sale for around six bucks. So that time and energy saved was worth it for me. To give my candles some height, as well as to help with my arrangement, I put two pieces of floral foam in the bottom from Dollar Tree, as well as three Dollar Tree LED candles. Then I'm taking these picks from Walmart. I did two boxwood picks, as well as two lavender picks. They're about $1.50 each, and I'm cutting them apart so that I can easily place them where I want. It helps with getting pieces to stay exactly where I want in the floral foam, because it's not a huge piece I'm working with. So I'm going around the outside, putting in items at an angle so that they don't stick straight up so you can still kind of see those candles. Then I'm gonna repeat that with my lavender. I ended up doing about one and a half sprigs of lavender and you can leave this as is if you don't want it to be Easter, but because we're doing an Easter dupe, I'm adding all six of those eggs, four to each corner and then two in the center. And the great thing about this is as you stick it into the floral foam, it is totally malleable you can move it and then also after easter this is a great spring piece to keep on your table so you can pull those eggs out and use it far longer than just for easter this would make a beautiful piece on a shelf or a really gorgeous centerpiece for easter you could do a bigger box or you could get a couple of these from michael's and set them up on like a long table if that's what you have and like i mentioned before you could easily remove those eggs for a much longer use of this piece so another win for a DIY instead of buy $80 versus 20 bucks on my end and I'm gonna use it all season long. 
We gotta make sure we fit a garland in here, right? I love my garland. So this Easter bunny burlap caught my eye, but I wanted to do more of a natural bunny look. So I grabbed three different colors that I would see in bunnies as well as some white pom-poms from Michaels. I started by taking just what I had on hand, which was this masking tape roll and tracing a circle onto the fold. I tried to quadruple it up and cut four at once and that was just silly. So I ended up cutting two at a time and then cutting two more. I ended up doing two of each color bunny for six total, but you can do as many or as little as you want. For each bunny, you're gonna want two circles and you'll see why in a minute. Then I went through and did all of my circles, both on the gray as well as the white for the bunnies as well. The next step was to hand cut some ears. So I just kind of wung it. I went up, curved one side and then curved the other side. And for each bunny, you're gonna want two sets of ears. So you're gonna need 12 total because we're doing six bunnies. Then you're also gonna need two little feet and I just freehanded those again. I cut one, use it as a template and then use that to cut the rest. Then I'm reaching for my Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks to make sure this thing stays and we're going to go all the way around the outside of our circles except for a little piece so that we can put some stuffing in there to kind of plump the bunnies up and make them nice and fluffy. Once that cooled, trim off anywhere where your two circles don't match up and then I'm just taking some extra polyfill and filling it up. You want to make sure that it's full but not too full so that when you go to shut it with hot glue it's not going to shut. I added a quick little strip at the end, held it, and then your body part of your bunny is done. For the feet, I wanted to add some yarn texture, so I just used a dowel needle, tied off the end of some yarn, double looped for each of the toes. So here I'm going around twice, and then I'm gonna go around the other side twice for those little feet, and then tie it in the back. Super simple stitch. If you don't wanna do this, you could also use just like a paint marker to make the little feet. There's a few different options. I just liked because it was felt that I had some yarn in there as well. Trim your excess, tie your ends, and then use some hot glue to hook them to your body that we just made. And then after your feet are hooked, just take some more hot glue and stick on your cute little bunny tail. I had a little bit of trial and error when it came to the ears, but here is how I found to work the best. I took some hot glue down the center and glued it, kind of pinched it, and then down the strip of the pinch, I put on the back of the bunny head. And that helped make it look like the bunny was facing away from you. And then my ears were a little too pointy, so I went back through and trimmed them more curvy. And here are those cute little bunnies. So to get the same look as the Kirkland's garland, I took my dowel needle again, and these are super cheap, D-O-L-L. -L. People don't know what I'm saying when I say that. It's a dowel needle. You can also use an upholstery needle, but it's gonna help you string up all your bunnies, figure out whatever pattern that you want, get them up on your garland, and they are good to go. These are so cute in garland format, but if you're also not a garland person or you don't have a space for it, you could easily just make these bunnies and use them on tiered trays or just add them to cute little vignettes like I do here. It just looks like this bunny is kind of hiding on my mantle. I love the cute little pom-pom. So multifaceted decor, theirs was 15 bucks. Mine, I was able to make for about half the cost. So when I saw this sign, it screamed Dollar Tree dupe to me. So I got one of these square organizers from Dollar Tree's crafter square section and I brought it home and figured maybe I could pull out the center to have it be a framed sign. Well, sure enough, there's not a ton of glue in there. <laughs> Typical Dollar Tree, just because it's a cheap item, it's cheaply made. And so I was able to pop out the wood on the inside and get essentially a faux framed wood sign. Then to get the wood look and kind of have it be a deeper color, I took some antique wax, you paint it on just like paint, and then you wipe it off like stain, and it's going to show you those really beautiful wood tones, but it's going to dry in a shorter amount of time. Then I'm doing the same thing on nine of these ornaments just to get the base to match, and you're just buffing it out, wiping it off. Once the sign is dry, you want to do a color in the center of the sign. I wanted to do ivory, but my ivory paint had hardened on me because I hadn't used it in a while. Wah, wah, it happens. So I ended up using some white chalk paint instead and it worked out just fine. I'm using a diagonal brush to get up on the edges. If you're worried about your painting skills, you could totally put some painter's tape in there to protect the sides. I got a little bit out of the lines, but it's no big deal. I had to do two coats there and let that dry, and then it was time to embellish my little eggs. So the color palette of the inspo wasn't really my jam, so I decided to go with pinks and purples. I started by using some masking tape to tape off tops, bottoms, diagonals, similar to the inspiration, but then I went through with pinks and purples to create different colors. 
My one in the center, I wanted to be fully a color, so I painted that pink. Probably didn't have to put the antique wax underneath, but I did. And then I let those sit to the side and dry. My last step, my last step for my eggs was to add some embellishments. So I used a variety of paint on brushes as well as paint markers to create polka dots and lines to give it a fun, whimsy Easter feel. So here's a look at all of the different designs that I created. I laid them out in a grouping of nine, three rows of three, and then I got ready to stick them onto my sign. All I did here was just add some hot glue to the back, make sure they were evenly spaced, worked my way from the center out, and I had a really fun dupe for this Kirkland's sign. The pink and purple totally fit my vibe, and that is such a plus of DIYing instead of buying because you can have it match what you like and the colors in your home. There's always a time and place to purchase decor, but that's my favorite thing about DIYing is having it match my aesthetic. So a quick reminder, here's theirs at 13 bucks and mine was just about $3 to put together with Dollar Tree supplies. The fun shape of this spring market Easter wall plaque caught my eye, but I thought it would also be really cute as a tray. So I grabbed some scrap plywood. This is three quarter inch plywood that I had left over from a build earlier last year. And I took a cap from some spray paint and created some little beveled or scalloping on the corners. Once I did that, I grabbed my jigsaw and just cut it out. And then I used that little piece as a stencil around the outside so that I could have four of the little scalloped edges around the outside. This step is totally optional. You could just do a square tray in the same process that I'm gonna show you. I just liked the detail. Then after giving it a thorough sand with my power sander, I went through with some dark walnut stain and stained it because that matches my aesthetic. You could paint this, you could do a variety of different things, totally up to you. Then I designed a file similar to the look of the Kirkland sign and cut it out on just some scrap vinyl on my Cricut. And then instead of weeding it as a decal, I weeded it as a stencil. So as you see here, I am taking out the areas where I want the paint to go instead of the outside to create a stencil. I added my paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. I love this because it's lower tack and it's not gonna rip up the wood that I just put down and the stain. I got it centered, made sure that it was right where I wanted it and then applied it with my squeegee. Now here before we paint, we're gonna seal down our stencil and we're gonna do that using Mod Podge. If I had painted the sign, say a brown paint or a black paint, I could seal the stencil down with that color of paint, but because it's stain, I'm not gonna put stain over the stencil, so that's why I do the Mod Podge. It dries clear and it's gonna seal it down so you get clean lines. Another way to get clean lines is to take one of these disposable makeup sponges and a little bit of your acrylic paint. I don't like to use chalk paint, I like to use acrylic paint for stenciling. Go over the top of your stencil. I ended up doing two to three coats just to make sure everything was coated here. Let it dry about halfway. And then I am peeling back my stencil carefully to reveal my beautiful design. I get a lot of questions on why do I stencil? Could I just use a decal? You could absolutely do that. If you do a decal, I would suggest sealing over the top just to make sure it stays. I would rather paint just because it's easier to buy different colors of paint than it is to have a ton of different colors of vinyl, but here we're using white. So personal preference, you can use either. Once I got out all of my little pieces inside of each little letter and such, I went through and figured out where I wanted my handles to go for my tray. Once I marked them, I just made little marks and then I took it outside and drilled holes with my drill so that I could put the hardware in. Once the holes were drilled, I just used the screws that came with these handles. I got them at Menards. You can get a variety of handles at a variety of different places, whatever suits your taste. And then I had this beautiful tray that could also be used as a sign. So you can lean it up like this, absolutely use it like the Kirkland sign, but then this would also be cute on a table or a guest room for some spring decor. Now, if you plan to use this for like an Easter bunny tray, etc., I would suggest using some polycrylic to seal it, but because I'm just using it for decor, it will be fine for me not to have it be sealed. Up next, we're gonna do my version of this hoop wreath. So I was happy to find for $4.49 a huge gold wreath form at Michael's. This was super easy to buy. I didn't have to take anything apart. I didn't have to spray paint. You could probably DIY it for cheaper from another place if you pull apart a Dollar Tree thing, but the size and the color, it just was worth it for me. And I got 20% off. Then I grabbed four stems of eucalyptus, two different kinds. One's a little bit more deeper green. One is a brighter green and I cut them to size on my wreath form. 
Then we're gonna wrap around some jute twine just to hook our stems to the wreath form. I like this cause it goes with the gold and the natural vibe of the wreath instead of having to wrap it with wire or anything. Also if Finn was to grab this, it is a lot nicer to a two year old's hand than floral wire. So a lot of my decor is informed by that nowadays. Once those are tied on, I'm adding some additional stems. And if you have any rogue pieces, just take some extra pieces of jute twine and tie them on to your wreath form. The goal here is to get both eucalyptus pieces to curve with your hoop wreath while also looking full. Once my eucalyptus was on the wreath, it was time to fix some of the pieces. So I hang it up to see what's going rogue. If there's any pieces kind of jetting out, I tie those up. And then I just took some hot glue on my two peony open flowers as well as my two bulbs to fill out my wreath. Now I decided to go with pink. You could do white like the inspiration. If you like other colors, you could change out the greenery. This is totally customizable, but the size of this is awesome. I also decided to go with a little bit more expensive of a flower from Michaels. And I plan to display this in my Hobby Lobby white tobacco basket on my gallery wall. So if you compare direct, theirs was 50 bucks and mine I made for about 29. Now granted, 29 is a little expensive for a wreath. I went with some Michaels florals, which were bigger and fuller, but you could also find similar eucalyptus and things at Walmart as well. This Easter bunny wood cutout is super cute and I thought I could cut this out with my jigsaw. So I took some scrap plywood. This is the same plywood I made the tray out of and I drew just freehand. Then I went through with my jigsaw and trimmed everything down. Make sure to go careful and slow. You don't have to go full octane the whole time. And I also make sure to wear my safety goggles. It's sometimes easy to just forget or not wanna put them on, but when there's pieces flying for safety, definitely do that. Once my little guy was cut out, I gave him a good sand because the jigsaw does not cut a super smooth line. Painted them white and then I used a sanding block to kind of distress the ends and get rid of any chucky areas because I used chalk paint. Then it was time to finish off his face. So to do the muted pink cheeks, I just put on a little bit of acrylic paint and buffed it out with my finger and did the same thing for both ears. So just put on a little bit of paint and then buff it out and that'll give you that muted kind of see-through color. Then for the inspiration, it had a darker color around the outside. So to recreate that look, I grabbed some of that antique wax and put it around the outside and buffed it out. And that really gave it a similar look. Then I opted to freehand on the face. So I did two circles with a black marker, buffed on a nose, and then came back with that paint marker to do the mouth and some whiskers here. I added two white dots for the eyes, and then I went back through and added just some little details around the outside. Super easy, these are optional. And I also added some little dots like freckles around the whiskers. I love this guy, he is super cute. I think this size will be great. He's about a half of the size of the Kirkland's option, but this is gonna be great for tier tray setups and he looks so cute next to my little Easter egg sign as well. They look like they go together as a set. They also had this bunny cutout, so I decided to try my hand at that too with my jigsaw. I used a can of stain as well as a cap to some spray paint to do the two different circles stacked and then I drew some ears by hand Cut that out with my jigsaw, gave it a sand, and then this one I decided to stain in dark walnut. When the dark walnut stain had dried, I used some masking tape to tape off the bottom. And instead of the white like the inspo, I decided to do purple to match some of my other Easter decor. I gave it two coats to make sure it covered and I love this purple color. And then to finish it off, I tied some jute twine around the neck and added a cute little bunny tail. And this guy was ready to go. So theirs were a variety of prices, different sizes than mine. This was more of an inspiration gather, but mine were all free because they were a scrap project. Win-win. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to head down to the comments and let me know your favorite project of today's video. And also while you're down there, click the link in the description to download Karma for free. Check it out. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. And also hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Went video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.